I invite you to stand. After the Lord was, Lord was baptized, the heavens were opened, and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove, and the voice of the Father thundered, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. As we begin to celebrate the, this Mass this morning, uh, the, the, the baptism of the Lord, um, I think it's worth noting that here is Jesus at the, his baptism. He's done nothing, right? He's just been born and he's lived for 30 years as a carpenter. He's done nothing. Well, we don't know what he's done. We just know that he's li lived a hidden life. He's lived a quiet life. He's lived, lived a life um, where he hasn't accomplished anything. Before he's accomplished anything, the Father declares over him two things. He declares over him, you're mine and I'm proud of you. And this is these, these two words that uh, I think are two words that every one of us at the beginning of this Mass, we need to be reminded of that at your baptism, the Father declared those two things over you as well. He said, you are mine. You are my beloved daughter. You are my beloved son. And I'm well pleased with you. I'm proud of you. Because that's, that's not only who we are who are approaching the Lord, that's the one who we're approaching. We're approaching our God and Father who already loves you. He's already proud of you. Regardless of what you've accomplished or not accomplished, he declares those two truths over you today. You're mine, and I'm proud of you. So as we begin this Mass, we come to the heart of the Father, and we just say, Lord, here are the way, ways that I've taken my heart back. Here's the places where I'm not proud of. Um, I'm not, I know you're not pleased with, but you are pleased with me, and so I give you the parts of me that are broken, the parts of me that are sinful, the parts of me that have chosen not your will, and ask you to heal me, because you are our God and Father, as we pray. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to seek and to save the lost. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You live to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son has appeared in our very flesh, grant, we pray, that we may be inwardly transformed through him whom we recognize as outwardly like ourselves, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by a strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
bless the Lord, my soul. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Oh, Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak you spread out the heavens like a ten cloth oh bless the lord my soul oh bless the lord my soul have constructed your palace upon the waters you make the clouds your chariot you travel on the wings of the wind you make the winds your messengers and flaming fire your ministers oh bless the Lord, my soul. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. How manifold are your works, O oh Lord. In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures, the sea also great and wide, in which are schools without number of living things, both small and great. Bless the Lord, my soul. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. They look to you to give them food in due time. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth oh bless the lord my soul oh bless the lord my soul oh bless the lord my soul oh bless
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. When the kindness and generous love of God, our Savior, has appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, and verses 21 and 22. The people were all filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. After all, the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying. Heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. You have a seat. Um, So, uh, on the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, one of the questions that comes up, I think, it's a question that I've been asked a lot, and I've even asked the question, is, so why did Jesus have to get baptized? We know why we have to get baptized. We have to get baptized because um, we need it. What did Jesus need to be baptized? And kind of the short answer that's come back in the last 2,000 years of the church has been, um, Jesus did not need to get baptized, but when he got baptized, he changed the waters. So John was, uh, clearly, John was baptizing. We just heard that in the gospel today. John was baptizing. But when Jesus allowed himself to be baptized, when Jesus submitted to that, when he surrendered to that, he did something to the waters. And the crazy thing is this, since he did something to the waters, now the waters do something to us. And this is remarkable. Like when it comes to our baptism, I'm not, I'm not sure if you've ever reflected on your own baptism, but it's worth it. It's, it is worth recognizing that baptism actually changes us. It actually does something. In fact, St. Peter says, baptism saves you now. In fact, St. Paul's letter to Titus, he said the exact same thing. We've been saved through baptism, regeneration. So <laughs> it's not optional is what I'm trying to say, that baptism saves you now that it transferred you from the kingdom of darkness to be part of God's kingdom. I think it's worth noting that uh, we're born not as we should be. That we're, I think it's, worth no, it's worth noting that when we're born, we're, we're not just not the, the person, I'm not just the, the people we should be, we're not the, the thing we should be. Here's what I mean, because baptism saves us. Um, one of the most incredible things that baptism does, right, is it washes, it washes away original sin or heals that original sin, that original wound. So Father Benedict Rochelle, at one point, he talked about original sin, and he wrote a book called The Original Wound because he said that people misunderstand original sin. You think we have original sin because of Adam and Eve's fall, right? Sure, but I didn't do anything wrong. So we're born in this, we're born with this original sin, and he said it's actually more appropriate, more accurate to describe it as the original wound. That, that we're made for relationship with God, we're, we're made for relationship with each other, we're made to actually have integrity in our hearts, in our minds, in our, who we are, and we're born with that wounded. We're born with our relationship with God wounded, our relationship with each other is born wounded, and even our relationship in our own hearts. We don't get ourselves, we're broken, we're wounded, and so he calls that, that that's the original wound that you didn't ask for, you didn't deserve, but every single one of us experiences that. What baptism does is it heals the original wound. 
right? I just think in this, in this sense, we're born out of a relationship with God. Now, God, for his part, loves us, right? God, for his part, he wants us to be saved. He wants us to be his. But we're born in a state where we're not his. We're born in a state where we are his beloved creatures. And he is our creator who loves us. But we're born in a broken relationship. In fact, baptism doesn't just heal that original wound. It actually changes us. As I said, we're not the people we should be. We're not even, just, we're not even the right species. What I mean by that is... That baptism doesn't just save us, baptism changes us. St. Peter said, baptism saves you now. He also said this, he also says, by baptism, we become partakers of the divine nature. Here's the second thing baptism does. It doesn't just begin to heal that original wound. It also changes who we are, it changes what we are. That, here's the kind of a controversial statement, but it shouldn't be, is that, um, you know, we're so used to living in a post-Christian world and a, in kind of Christendom that we look around, we say, well, everyone's a child of God. And the reality, of course, is that that's not true that we're not born children of God, we're born beloved creatures of God, that God absolutely loves with everything he is. But we're not born children of God, we're born beloved creatures of God. It's only through baptism that we become God's children. Which is, it's, just, it's, it's remarkable. So the example would be, would be kind of this, you know, God could call us his children, but unless we're changed, we're not his children. So uh, I have a sister who likes her pets. And so she's one of those people who says like, you know, when she comes home and she says to her cats, like, hi, mommy's home. Or to her dog, like, mommy's home. These are my babies. I'm like, mom, uh, Beth, like, seriously, you're not that hairy. You can't be their mom. Um, but the truth is she can say that she's their mom. She could even go down the courthouse and legally adopt her pets, but that wouldn't make her into their mom. That wouldn't make those pets her kids. Again, you might love pets. That's awesome. You might even say I'm a pet mom or a dog dad or whatever you want to say. That's fine. I don't care. Um, but when it comes to reality, it's not true. You're their owner. You're their master. They're your property. They're your pets. You can love them absolutely, but they will never be your children and you will never be their mom or their dad. Why? Not because you don't love them enough, but because you're two different things. You're different species. You're a human being, I assume, and your pets are whatever being they are. Same thing is true for us and God. God is divine. We are not. We are human, again, God's beloved creatures, but we don't share the same nature until what happens. At baptism, we become temples of the Holy Spirit. God shares his nature with us. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you at your baptism, when it came upon you at your baptism, you became a different creation. In fact, as St. Peter said, you become partakers of the divine nature. You're different now. You're new now. You're something else now. And the example I'd love to use is, and they have heard it a thousand times, is the example of Pinocchio, right? So we have the story of Pinocchio, and Pinocchio is made by Geppetto. Geppetto is the master woodcarver, and he makes Pinocchio out of love, and he makes Pinocchio in his own image and likeness. He can walk like Geppetto. Pinocchio can talk like Geppetto. Pinocchio can think like Geppetto. Pinocchio is broken like Geppetto is broken. But Pinocchio is not Geppetto's son. And Geppetto is not Pinocchio's father. Geppetto is Pinocchio's maker who loves him. And Pinocchio is the beloved creation. But they're not father and son. Something that has to happen to Pinocchio in order for him to be able to look at Geppetto and say, that's my dad. And what has to happen? He has to become a real boy, right? He has to, he has to, be, he has to have the same nature as his maker. And when he does become a real boy, then he can look at Geppetto and say, you're my father, you're my dad. And Geppetto can look at his creation and say, now Pinocchio, you actually are my child. You are my son because they share the same nature. You guys, I don't know if you realized, on the moment, you, the day you were baptized, the moment you were baptized, not only was that, that relationship with God healed, that original wound began to be healed, but you were made into his daughter. You were made into his son. That day, never before that, but forever afterwards, God is your father. You were brought into a real relationship. And I want to keep capitalize on this, to highlight this. Not only was, again, the original wound began to be healed, this relationship with the Lord, relationship with each other, relationship in our hearts, but you were transformed so that whenever you pray, you can say what St. Paul says. You can, you can pray the way Jesus prayed, who says, Abba, or Dad. And the Father looks at you and he says, you're my child. Now, again, to say that not everyone is a child of God is not, uh, it's not contrary, sorry, it's not, not trying to be mean to people who aren't Christians. Because there is no religion, there's no philosophy, there's no belief anywhere until Christianity came on the scene that even claimed that we were God's children. Muslims do not think they're God's children. They uh, would actually believe that, we, that would be blasphemy in Islam. Jews would only be God's children by analogy. And Buddhists and, and, and uh, Taoists and Hindus, 
nothing, not even close to God's children. They don't even claim that. It is only Christians who claim to be God's children because he has adopted us in Jesus Christ. He's given us a share of his Holy Spirit. Again, which brings us into what? Brings us into a real relationship with God. If we're gonna have a real relationship with God, that means two things. That means we have real rights. Think about what that means. That, if you have a real relationship with God, that means you have real rights, which means you have access to the Father. I love this, the, the reality. If you're God's son, you have access to the Father. So there's a story that we, uh, we tell our students every fall um, through the Alpha program. And it's a story of this, uh, during the Civil War, there was this Union soldier who was on the front lines, essentially. And he heard that his father and his brother had gotten killed in battle. And he knew that his mom and his sister were back at the farm. And he knew that unless he got there and helped them, that they would lose everything. But he was en enlisted. He was the, his, his commanding officers needed him on the field. And so his only hope, his only hope for leaving the front and going to help his mom and his sister was if Abraham Lincoln, President Lincoln, had given him permission for this. So he goes to Washington, D.C., and he tries to go up to the front door of the White House, and they, no one lets him in, of course, because he's just this normal, average Union soldier, common, and they say, the president doesn't have time for you, essentially. And so the story is he goes out you know, to this picnic bench or park bench, and he's just weeping, sobbing, going like, no, not only have I lost my father and my brother, but my mom and my sister, they're, they're gonna be lost without me. And as the story goes, this young boy comes up to this soldier and asks him why he's crying, and he tells him his story about his father, about his brother, about his mom and his sister. And he just, he says, if I could have just talked to the president, I would have hope. So the little boy says, you want to talk to the president? Follow me. And he takes the soldier by the hand and, and leads him around, not to the front door of the White House, but leads him around the back door of the White House, he opens up the door, you know, walks up the steps, opens up the door, walks through the hallways, past all the you know, generals and all the other people who are in charge there, all the people who are guards. And he walks to the Oval Office door and he, throw, he doesn't even knock. He just opens the door, walks in, and behind the desk in the Oval Office is the president of the United States who looks up and he says, Tad, what are you doing here? And this little boy says, Dad, this soldier needs to talk to you. You have access in Jesus because of your baptism. You have access because of Jesus, the Son of God, who's given you his Holy Spirit, so you actually now are also a son of God or a daughter of God. You have access to the Father because a real relationship, that's a real relationship, gives you real rights, which means whenever you need him, you can call out to your Father and he hears you. Whenever you're broken, you can ask your Father, for wholeness and he gives it to you. Whenever you're lost, you ask for the Father and he finds you. Because this is a real relationship. You can actually make demands on God, which is crazy, bonkers, it's bananas. But this is a real relationship because, so you have real rights. But also if this is a real relationship, then you have real responsibilities. Because a third thing that baptism does doesn't just begin to heal the original wound, doesn't just make us into God's sons and daughters, it also brings us into his family. And if this is going to be a real relationship, then you have real rights. You, every church you ever go into, every Catholic church you ever go into as a baptized Christian, that's your home. That's, that's your place. Now, they might have hours and stuff, you can't like break in. But like, that's meant to be your home where you can actually find, say that, no, I belong here. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, you always belong. Real rights but you also have real responsibilities. Which means God can say, hey, I need you. And you have to say, okay. The church can say, hey, I need you, we need you. And if this is a real relationship, then the answer is okay. How can I serve? How can I help? I think sometimes we have forgotten that this is a real relationship with God because we're afraid that the real rights it couldn't possibly be true, but it is true. I think sometimes we forget that we have a real relationship with God because we're afraid of the real responsibilities and ask, could I ever live up to that? To say no to myself and yes to the church, or no to myself and yes to God. But that is the call. On this feast of the baptism of the Lord, we not only hear about Jesus, who when he entered the waters, he changed them. We also get to reflect on the fact that when you were baptized, those waters changed you. So you're never alone. You're never abandoned. You're never so far from the Father that he can't hear your voice, that he can't see your tears, 
that he can't bring you home. Because you are, and always will be, a beloved child of the Father, with whom he is well pleased. I invite you to stand as we profess our faith in this God of whom we have heard. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were men, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident as God's sons and daughters, we approach our Father who hears us. that the church may effectively lead all peoples to acknowledge Christ as the Son of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That nations may resolve their conflicts by seeking the justice and peace brought to the world by the Lord Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the Christian community, made one by our commu common baptism, may always welcome the unborn, the stranger, and all who are vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us may renew the commitment of our own baptisms, renouncing sin and promising to serve God faithfully in his holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That those who are ill as sons and daughters of God, offering their sufferings to him with patience and trust, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who have died may share in the glory of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray by offering up our prayer for vocations for the Diocese of Duluth, but also uh, for your home diocese as well as we pray. Almighty Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in our diocese. Help us to be generous in our response to your call. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work and strengthen us with the courage to say yes and to follow you. Help us as a diocese, as a parish, as families, to encourage and foster vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Mary, Queen of the Rosary, and ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for the loss of the church. Accept, O Lord, these offerings. We are brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, had been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And, with, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and with your glorious martyrs, and with all your saints and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, Informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. O oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I am constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts of all. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name 
and in truth through Christ our Lord. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, can we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Um, I guess probably you've used announcements before that prayer. I apologize. Um, two things. One is, um, I understand, maybe I should have said this at the beginning of Mass, but I, I understand that so many, uh, if you're joining us, it, it might be because you're doing everything fine and you just wanted to, um, after normal Mass in person, you wanted to come and join us, which is great, that's awesome. It's called, it's called the Virtual Front Pew for a reason and call it a community for a real reason. Um, that's really great. It's, it's an honor, it's a gift. Um, but also, maybe you had to. Maybe you actually, uh, you're sick. Maybe you're prevented from being at Mass in person. Uh, maybe you're trekking right along and all of a sudden just got, you know, taken out of the knees and know that every time we celebrate this Mass, we are celebrating it for you who are uh, attending virtually, regardless of the reason why we're offering this for you. Uh, and secondly, is we're really excited because uh, in like three days from now, uh, our students will be, back, will be back on campus and we'll be have, uh, we had a little break with our, first, with our students being away, but now uh, they're coming back in a couple of days and school starts on Wednesday and it's great. Pray for us very much as we pray for you. Please pray for us for that as well. It is a massive gift. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.